Institute of Humble Lama Itigelov presents <laughs> Phenomenon This was totally inexplicable and therefore scary. On September 10, 2002, not far from ulan Ude, where a Buddhist churchman had traditionally been buried, there took place an exhumation of a particular burial in attendance of the leadership of the Buddhist traditional Sangha of Russia and local citizens and with participation of a forensic medical expert. In the elevated from beneath ground cedar box, there was sitting in a lotus position an elderly man covered in silk kadaks, which are sacred long scarves, symbolizing deepest respect. For the identification purposes, a famous Buryat historian Bimba Tsibikov was invited, who immediately identified the exhumed person as a legendary religious figure, the 12th Pandito Hambalama Dashe Dorjo Itigelov. In his young years, Bimba Tsibikov met with Hambalama and listened to his teachings. By his description, Hambalama Itigelov was not a very tall man of slight build, and he remained exactly the same, having spent 75 years underground. This was amazing that his facial features had hardly changed. How could this be possible at all? This was out of the ordinary and completely incomprehensible. Dasha Dorju Itigelov was born in 1852. The boy was an orphan, which had already made his case exceptional, since with Buryats all orphaned children were taken care of by their relatives. The boy herded cattle and claimed he would become humble lama and was laughed at by everyone around. But once he showed up riding an ox with a stake in hand. On top of the stake there was a human skull. This incident became known to Lamas and they foretold exceptional fate and grand destination for the child. When adolescent Itigelov happened to get into the Aninsky Datsan, a major spiritual, philosophical and cultural center for studies, the head of the Datsan himself became his mentor. Having sensed something really amazing in the 13-year-old child, we gave him a scholarship and since he was from the Cossacks estate, we were paying off compensation for him not to be summoned for the army service. Itigelov had spent over 20 years at the Aninsky Datsan and afterwards striving to perfect his knowledge, completed his studies at the medical faculty at the Tamchinsky Datsan. They say that Itigelov, being an exceptional practitioner, was not only an excellent Esculapian, but could move places instantly at that. Once after a door closed behind him, he turned up a kilometer away from the place he had just exited, looking like a tiny dot on the horizon. In the spring of 1910, humble lama Irol Tuyev suggested that Itigelov should nominate himself for the post of Pandito Humble Lama, and a year later, on April 11, 1911, Dasha Dorjo Itigelov became the head of the Buddhist of Eastern Siberia and Transbaikal region, alongside co-chairing the ministers of education, culture and healthcare. The Russian Emperor Nikolai II, as well as the whole Tsar family, treated Itigelov with utmost respect. As is known, Buryat Lamas treated royalties for illnesses. 
his own people, Buryats, began to worship him during his lifetime still. When Itigelov was made the head of the Yangazhansky Datsan, he contributed all his fortune for the construction of small temples, Dugans, in honor of the soldiers perished in the Russian-Japanese war. It is notable that out of 300 Yangazhinsky Cossacks who had been blessed by him prior to being sent to the fronts of the First World War, none were killed, and all returned home in one piece. Itigelov gathered money for the wounded and their families, organized hospitals, sent medical lamas to the front hospitals. Catholic soldiers received packages from Buddhist Buryatia for Easter in 1915. In 1917, following the abdication of the Emperor Nikolai II, whom he had vowed to be loyal to back in 1911, Itigelov resigned the post of Pandito Hambalama and returned to the Yangazhinsky Datsan, where he engaged in medical practices and education activities. He wrote works on Buddhist philosophy, completed fundamental works on Tibetan pharmacology, and left spiritual heritage for his congregation, disciples and successors. During his lifetime, Itigelov became the epicenter for all things mysterious and incomprehensible. Thus, for example, Itigelov claimed that he was totally aware of his own previous reincarnations. For all believers, he was without a doubt the reincarnation of the first humble Lama Zayaev, the founder of Buddhism in Russia. Zayaev was born in 1702. Having lived for 75 years, he passed away, but promised to his disciples to return. In 1852, 75 years after Zayev's departure, Itigelov was born. He would also live for 75 years, and he would come back to us 75 years later. Thus, the figure 75 repeats itself four times. When Itigelov became Hambo Lama, the parish of the Tsongolsky Datsan, which had been repeatedly flooded, implored him to find a new spot for the temple construction. He determined the place, stating that two personal belongings of Zayaev himself, a bell, Ganta, and a ceremonial mythological weapon, Vajra, were buried at that spot. And true enough, those personal belongings of the first Buryat Lama were found at that exact spot and, consequentially, a new Datsan was erected at that place. On June the 15th, 1927, a 75-year-old Itigelov transited into the phenomenal condition, same condition he is currently in. Before the transition, he asked his disciples to read a specific Nuga Namshi prayer that stands for wishing well-being for the departing, which is read for the departed. Confused disciples did not dare to read this prayer while their teacher was still alive. Then Itigelov commenced reading it himself, and the monks were forced to oblige. After the ceremony had been completed in compliance with Itigelov's will, his body, seated in a lotus position, was placed in a bumhan and left to the burial place at the Huha Zurhen territory, the Evalginsky region, the Buryat Republic. Right before his final departure, Itigelov gave very precise directions as to the way he should be buried and when he must be visited. A checkup on his bodily condition had to be performed 30 years later and he promised to return another 50 years later. A group of lamas exhumed Itigelov's body in 1955, two years prior to the time stated in his will. The procedure was forced. There happened a severe storm in Zun Orongoi village, and the head of the Buddhist clergy made his decision to conduct the necessary procedures ahead of the designated time. Having confirmed the intact state of Itigelov's body, the lamas conducted the required rituals. 
same very ritual was carried out in 1973. Then it was related to a massive flood that had separated the Ivalginsky district from the mainland for over a month. The keeper of Itigelov's body, Bimba Lama, had always stated that today's generation had to find again Itigelov's Bumhan and check his body's condition. And he managed to locate a person who knew the exact spot where the teacher was buried for certain. The elderly Amgalan Dabayev, whose father-in-law partook in Bumhan's opening in 1955, was indeed able to indicate the spot. Itigelov's body in the Bumhan turned out to be perfectly preserved. It had soft muscles and resilient skin, flexible joints. The hair and nails were present. No liver mortis was visible. Add to this picture the fact that no signs of mummification or embalming were identified. When we arrived, the box was opened and we saw Hambolama Itigelov's head. This was the head of a living person. Especially when we saw the top of the head, it was shining. It was a real shock. When Itigelov's body was being transported in a truck, his skin was damaged on one shin and the back of the hand. According to the statement of the eyewitnesses, red, non-clotted jelly-like blood was clearly visible in the open wounds. When we were transporting him in a truck, it shook really badly, and then we saw blood, not fluid, but thick. Medical examiners were absolutely certain of the fact that after the exhumation, the body will completely decompose within three to four days, although nothing of the sort did happen in this case. The expert said that most probably the body would be there for us for some three days only, but after that we were sure to lose it anyways, and no one had any idea what was going to happen next. The body looked so very unusual that the medical forensic examiner, supposed to conduct the post-mortem, refused to conduct the examination on his own, and demanded that a special commission should be set up for this purpose. My initial thought was that it was absolutely out of the question that the body could be preserved in such a state after so many years. How is this possible at all? After so many years. In my understanding, no such thing could be possible. In the available literature, the state we found the Tegelov's body in is inexplicable. After all the necessary ceremonial actions had been performed, Itigelov's body was moved to the Ivalginsky Datsan. At first a special box was made of double glazed glass for the Lama's body. Then the decision was made to order at the Krasnoyarsk Birusa plant two special refrigerators to maintain the temperature of 5 degrees Celsius for the body. But it was unnecessary to protect Itigelov from temperature fluctuations and the time flow itself. Although in summer, temperatures in Buryatia rise as high as 49 degrees Celsius, Itigelov's body does not suffer from rotting or decomposition. Moreover, all visitors to the Ivalginsky Datsan state that they have experienced a powerful energy flow emanating from Itigelov's body. Coupled with this is the fact that his face is covered in sweat, thus there is a loss of energy. How and by what means the energy balance is kept up when there is no access to light or solar power? What can serve as a source of energy supply in this case? Lama Bimba Dorjiev looks after the resting Lama. He walks in into the premises where Itigelov's body is contained twice daily to check if everything is all right. He knows that Itigelov is 1.64 meter tall and his weight is 41 kilos. All these figures remain unchanged. The lotus position in which Hambolama had been sitting for 75 years in the cedar box is also unchanged and preserved without using any supporting or fixing devices. Every single morning after the service, Lama Bimba Dorjiev stays with Itigelov in private and meditates for half an hour evaluating his condition. During this time, he receives certain information from him. This can be in form of different thoughts, messages or visions. Afterwards, Bimba Lama recounts the message for the teachers of the Buddhist university 
and they interpret it in writing. Of course, there are people who are very skeptical in regard to these messages. How can you be so sure the information is from Itigelov? There may be images and thoughts that the keeper himself is having. But Itigelov's messages sound very peculiar. A modern person could not devise them since speech has been developing, and today people do not express themselves in such ways. Days, months, even years had passed, but Itigelov's body remained intact. The medical examiners visiting the Datsan were always amazed. The intactness of the body was in total contradiction with the laws of nature. After long consideration, the current head of the Buddhists of Russia gave the scientists the permission to research Itigelov's body. The examination was performed by the head of the Personal Identification Bureau with the Russian Forensic Examination Bureau, Professor Viktor Zviagin. Samples of Hambolama Itigelov's body were provided for analysis. The professor took several hairs from the head and skin that had peeled off Itigelov's leg and cut off a piece of toe for analysis. The received results literally shocked the expert. The conducted spectral analysis of organic bodily tissues revealed no features different from the tissues of a living person. In fact, it can be said that the official outcome of the state forensic medical examination written down as an official document proves the existence of human afterlife after their physical death. A famous manual therapist, Alexei Ajeev, who had been monitoring Itigelov's body since 2002, was able to sense the cerebral pulsation using his own method. In his opinion, cerebral hemispheres of a living person emanate three to four surges per minute, at the same time, those of the allegedly dead and rigid Hambalama constitute one surge per minute. As the result, the scientists happen to be facing the still unsolvable mysteries. One, how can the current condition of Itigelov's body be qualified? Two, how is the body's energy balance upkept? What does it nurture on in the condition of no access to light? It goes without saying, this phenomenon is keeping the scientists restless, since Hambolama Itigelov's state is unique and has no analogues in the whole world. Before departing, Itigelov had left no directions concerning his body's examination whatsoever. That is why on January 3, 2005, all experiments related to Itigelov's case were stopped. The Buddhists say that Hambo Lama is no exhibit for experiments, and we do not need any proof, we simply know that he is alive. The Buddhists themselves are more worried about the spiritual and philosophical aspects of everything that is happening to Itigelov's body today. In 2004, in Buryatia, there was founded the Itigelov's Institute under the leadership of Yenjima Dabayevna Vasilieva, with the ultimate mission to preserve the humble Lama Itigelov's heritage, research his phenomenal condition, and ensure sustainability of his course. Many modern Buryat creators seek to comprehend the processes undergoing with Hambalama's body. Composer Pavet Tursunov and famous Buryat musician, multi-instrumentalist Batuvshin composed a sketch for the ballet, whereby contemplations of the phenomenon are disclosed by means of dance. The sketch for the ballet was directed by a famous Japanese ballet maker Morihiro Iwata, the head of ballet group with the Buryatsky Ballet and Opera Theater. When leaving for Buryatia, Morihiro Iwata said that he was looking to deeper comprehend the value of human existence upon Earth. Contemplations on Hamba Lama in Tigelov's mysterious ways may help him to realize those intentions. Meanwhile, mysterious and extremely weird things kept happening in connection with Itigelov's body. Ivan Chulkov visited the Datsan and related his tragedy. His favorite daughter Olga fell into a coma after a gunshot wound to the head. 
Olga was living in Moscow with a boyfriend. He worked in the militia, was working shift in Pushkino, got himself drunk with vodka on the New Year's Eve, left shift with his service weapon, came home and got rowdy. Olga was living in Moscow with a boyfriend. He worked in the militia, was working shift in Pushkino, got himself drunk with vodka on the New Year's Eve, left shift with his service weapon, came home and got rowdy, started firing. The bullet entered through the temple, passed across the head tangentially, crushing and smashing all cranial bones on its way, and exited on the back of the head. I came to Ulan Ude in the morning, around 11, was walking the streets aimlessly, suddenly my phone rang. You must be at the Ivolginsky Datsan, and it's minus 45 outside. Write down the number. What should I write it down with? I lower my eyes, and there's a pen lying on the sidewalk. I lift it, and it's writing. Minus 45 outside. I'm running to the parking lot. The car has stood outside all night long at minus 45. I put the key into ignition and it starts. I arrive at the place and the llamas are waiting and they say to me, go in there. A friend of Ivan Chulkov advised him to go to the Ivalginsky Datsan and beg Itigelov to save his daughter. I don't see him talking. Don't see the mimics, but I hear him talking to me in my head. And I'm only begging for my daughter to live. And I hear everything is going to be fine, your daughter will live. I then ask him how I can pay him back for that. And I see him shake his head slowly, as if thinking that something was wrong with me. When I come home later this evening, my wife's calling to say that Olga has come round. Her condition has stabilized. She came out of a coma. I had a dream about an elderly man behind the glass. And although I had heard of his exhumation, I was not aware he was sitting behind a glass. I had never dreamed of him before, but I had this dream last night. We had a short conversation and I understood him. After a while, Ivan came to Datsan, to Itigelov, together with his daughter. I carried her small, dehydrated body out of the carriage. But when we entered Itigelov's premises, Hamba Lama smiled. The leadership of the Buddhist traditional Sangha of Russia made the decision to hold special worshipping days to worship Hamba Itigelov's precious body seven to eight days per year on major Buddhist holidays. Nowadays, pilgrims and mere tourists from all over the world come to the Ivalginsky Datsan. Those of them who had the chance to take a look at Lama remain totally sure that he is still living, being in a state of deep meditation. There are many registered cases of people being cured after communicating with Itigelov. Some pilgrims tell that Lama winked at them, opened his eyes, and even rose up a little, though all this seems absolutely impossible. Of course, the emotions are overwhelming. He seemed to be really alive and looking at us. And I saw that he was really alive and he was sweating. That convinced me. He is sitting in a lotus position, and he is totally alive, and his spine feels alive, and there is resilience in it, there is no support. Me, my husband, and my piano player are backing away from him, and all of a sudden I see Pandito doing so, and returning to his position, I grab my husband by the hand, I feel as if losing my mind, he bowed, I also saw it, didn't get it. The pianist is looking at me, Lyubov Yurievna, did you see it? I said, yes. At a certain moment, I realized that Lama was looking at me, his eyes wide open, and he was waiting for a question, and I asked him a question, it may seem weird now, but I heard his answer quite clearly. 
and I accepted orthodoxy three months later with a light heart, and Father Tikhon Christianed me, he who sent me to Hamba Lama. One more mystery. In 2009, the head of the Buddhists of Mongolia, Hamba Lama Choi Zhamts, Hamba Lama of the Buddhist Sangha of Russia Ayushev, and head of Dalai Lama Datsan in India, Jadar Impoche, measured Itigelov's bodily temperature and discovered that it was 34 degrees Celsius, whilst Hamba Lama's regular bodily temperature is 20 degrees. It increases during worshipping masses and massive visitations. New times are approaching that will bring new knowledge along. People are very wrong when they acknowledge only the thing that they can see, touch or measure. Scientists have failed so far to explain the Buddhist churchman's mystery, whose body was retrieved from the earth 75 years after its burial. But they are unanimous in one thing. Itigelov's phenomenon is a sensation not only in the history of Buddhism, but in the history of humanity in total. True enough that such a biological object as Hamba Lama Itigelov's incessant body cannot exist from the common point of view. Nevertheless, such object does exist and is permanently present in our world. This means only the following. Our perceptions of the world are imperfect and need to be corrected. <laughs>